first. We're actually going to take up the supplemental agenda request real quick, which is to deliberate and consider possible approval of a rental contract with Bain Machinery to lease an excavator by Commissioner John Clement. Commissioner? I've got a bridge that's been washed out since all this rain that I can't reach the creek bed. We're going to, it washes out every time we get a big rain. And I haven't opened the road back up because uh, until I can get in and set forms and concrete it. And the only way to get to it is a piece of equipment big enough to reach down from the road and uh, dig it up and set the forms for, and I'm rambling. Anyway, it's a lease agreement for one week, and I'd like the court to approve the lease agreement so the judge can sign it. Uh, the excavator is scheduled to come next week. I make a motion that we approve. We have a motion by Commissioner John Clement, second by Commissioner Snugs. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? I just have it. Motion passes 5-0. Uh, we do have 26 people that have signed up to speak. Uh, we have dedicated an hour for public comments on the monument issue. Um, individuals will be called in the order that they signed up. I think that was the, the fairest way to do it. Um, and each member, as you can, should be able to see on the clock, has two minutes and 20 seconds to, to speak. Uh, just as a reminder, this is a public meeting. Uh, it is a court body as well, so uh, any outburst or derogatory uh, accusations or comments can, uh, will not be tolerated. And with that, uh, we'll jump right into it. First speaker is Bob Smith. Mr. Smith, the microphone is yours, and let me try to start this thing off real quick. And you've got two minutes and 20 seconds. You're on the clock, so. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Cook County's Commissioner's Court. I would like to thank you for listening to the people of Cook County and response to them and not ignore them. I've received numerous phone calls and they have all been positive that the Commissioner's Court has responded with them and contacted them. These people have the voice that support you, not the opposition. God bless Texas, Cook County, and Gainesville. I didn't think it's outside. Hold on just one second. We're going to, um, we're getting some feedback. Are we getting it in here, Christian, or is that the outside speaker? Yeah, we may need to turn that down a little bit. I'll have Daryl do that real quick. We put a speaker outside so that those outside can hear, but we don't want it to have feedback inside. Y'all couldn't hear him? No. We're getting, we're getting feedback. They, they couldn't hear you then. We're getting feedback in the room. So we're trying to address that. I'm sorry about the technical issues here. We're trying to make sure everybody's heard, but at the same time not, uh, not uh, having the... The next speaker is uh, Aaliyah Thomas. She is here. Ms. Thomas, on the phone. We don't. Uh, I don't have her notes. I will be calling in. Excuse me. Uh, yes, this is a call in. Do we have somebody? This in number ends in eight one one seven. No, we don't. So we'll skip that speaker. The next up is Angela Hansard. Angela, she may be calling in uh, 3063. Do we know if these individuals 
Can you check and see if Angela Hansard is out in the hall? Thank you. I guess I just got a delay on it. Yeah, it's a five or ten second delay. Okay, so the next speaker is Martin Phillips. Martin. Phillips, P H I L O. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, good morning, neighbors. Um, I'm relatively new uh, to this community. I moved to Gainesville because my wife grew up here in Cook County. Um, and after reading some of the letters to the editor lately, I I kind of feel like I need to give a disclaimer. I'm not Antifa. I'm not uh, a communist or socialist. So I'm your neighbor. Um, I understand memorials. I understand traditions. And I understand history. 22 years in the military will have that impact. I also understand seeing things from another's perspective. That came from uh, traveling to over 150 countries and seeing the absolute worst that humans can do to each other. I've seen mass graves. I've seen severed heads sitting in people's, the owner's laps on the gates of the city to serve as a, a warning to others. I've seen miles and miles of buildings that are flattened because people don't agree with each other. Those actions had uh, majority support. And sometimes as leaders, we have to do things that we know are right despite popular opinion. This is one of those times. I've heard that statue represents Southern pride, history, heritage. Maybe all those things are correct. But to many others, it represents racism and oppression. I've heard that it needs to remain so that we never forget and therefore don't respect we don't repeat the errors of the past. No, I say we don't need that memorial to remind us of a war, the cause of which apparently we can't even agree on. We learn to prevent horrors from, or we prevent horrors from reoccurring by studying and listening. In this case, statues don't, or statues don't prevent history from reoccurring. Empathy does. In this case, empathy is caring how an African-American parent Feels when they lead their family past that statue to conduct county business. Yes, that monument is historic, but it no longer belongs on the county property. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm going to apologize for any names I start butchering. Uh, uh, next up is Joel uh, Nahara. Joel. Can we, ah, yes. So they can hear us outside. Yes, sir, you have uh, two minutes and 20 seconds and time starts now. Thank you for this time to speak. On July 2nd, 1964, the Civil Rights Act was signed into law by President Lyndon B. Johnson. It is hard to believe that a bill outlawing discrimination and segregation would be so controversial, but it was. With the exception of Missouri and Oklahoma, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was almost unanimously opposed by the states that had made up the Confederate States of America. Because of this, there was no easy road to passage for the bill. After passing the House 290 to 130, the bill was delayed further by a 54-day Senate filibuster. A representative at the time voted against it, as did one Texas senator. As Texas was commanded by law to finally change, you would hope that would have been the end of it, and it wasn't. Even after the passage of the Civil Rights Act, all the former Confederate states upheld their laws prohibiting interracial marriage. That is until the landmark Supreme Court decision Loving v. Virginia in 1967. Almost every other state that repealed such laws prior to that decision. Once again, we resisted against what was right. Clearly, what is popular is not always right. We had it wrong then, in that period nearly 60 years ago, when our state opposed basic human decency. It is my belief that we have it wrong now. Mayor Jim Goldsworthy, quoting the late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., said it best recently, the time to 
do what's right. It's always time, sorry, the time is always right to do what's right. My specific issue with the statue is its current location. Courthouses should be our beacons of justice. Justice should be impartial and fair. Our rights to due process and equal protection are essential to the American values of liberty and equality. For the same reason the Supreme Court prohibited religious displays outside of the courthouses in McCreary County versus ACLU, I believe the Confederate statue should not cast its shadow on our courthouse. Considering what the Confederacy stood for, which Mayor Goldsworthy quoted in the Cornerstone Address, the Negro is not equal to the white man, it is a potential stain to justice rendered by our courts if the display of the statue is considered tantamount to the endorsement of those Confederate beliefs. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next up, we have uh, Ronnie Montgomery. You may begin. My name is Ronnie Montgomery. I'm a lifelong resident of Cook County. Uh, first, we must understand what the South was about. Slavery was a very real issue in the country in the 1800s. Slavery existed in the North and in a larger extent in the South. However, the war has not followed the time for slavery, but for succession of states from the Union. To understand this better, we need to read Lincoln's first inaugural address, May 4, 1861. At the time of the Southern succession from the Union, Lincoln's main point was succession would not be allowed. Lincoln said, as to slavery, he stated no objection to the Corwin Amendment. The Constitution supported, this was a Constitution when it was supported by the Northern Control Legislature. This formally protected slavery in states where it already existed. Today, slavery is human trafficking. Slavery has existed from the time before Christ in near all races and nationalities. Today, some organizations seem to not want to be reminded of history, but hide from history, and so try to hide history from the rest of the population. Political threat and special interest groups want to divide, destroy, and intimidate for special privilege. This behavior is nothing but regressive and divisive in today's world. Reasons for war between the states. The South thought they were fighting for the second American Revolution because of overbearing centralized government. The North thought they were fighting to hold the Union together. The American Confederate soldier fought for the North, fought because the Northern armies were invading his home in the South. In the South, only approximately 6% of the people owned slaves. Common sense. 94% did not fight to support the 6%. American Confederate veterans fought to protect their families, their land, their state from invasion. One Confederate soldier captured was asked, why are you fighting? He replied, because you're down here. Thank you, sir. Oh, Lord. The next speaker we have is Robert Hogan. Mr. Hogan here. He may or may not be calling in. Uh, is there a number that ends in 106? Oh, I'm sorry. Come on in. The mic is yours. OK, thank you. Uh, my name is Robert Hogan, a resident of Cook County, and uh, part of Precinct 2. I don't know where Jason's at. Anyway, there he is. Anyway, I've talked to Jason, and uh, I thank you for the court allowing me to speak. On my behalf, that rock that sits out there, that statue, you have the ability, anybody has the ability to see either the greatest good or the worst. We all have that choice. And I can't change people's choice or how they choose to see it. But what I can do is in this, in this generation, if they want to come forth and make a change, I'm all for it. They can do whatever they want to with it. But here's the thing that I have, the caveat on it. Every generation gets to make something. But I do not believe, nor do I want one dime of my taxpayer money 
to do anything with that. If they want to come in or a group wants to come in and make a change, let that group raise their own funds. Let them create uh, a statue or memorial that will symbolize something that will bring great joy to the community, which is fine. But I do not believe at any time should our funds be used to move that statue at this time. Uh, I appreciate the hard work you guys are doing, and I understand the hard the, the position that you're in. The other thing I would like to do, I would like to see a referendum that this be put to the voters of Cook County in each precinct. If that could happen, I, I would really appreciate that because I would like to have every, I believe everyone would like to have a voice in this decision, not just a few. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. The next speaker we have is Tori Henderson. You're on the you're time starting. Thank you. <clears throat> You've become informed on the cornerstone, this cornerstone speech deeming Negroes being inferior to the white man, and you know neo-Confederate monuments were introduced years after the loss of the Confederacy as a means of preserving white supremacist ideologies. For two months, citizens of your county have requested to be heard and provided inclusion in this community we contribute to. Through each peaceful request, we have been met with hatred, racial slurs, spit on, threatened, and constantly intimidated. I think of other dark memories Gainesville has endured. In 1862, Union Link supporters were hung by the majority. In 1923, 20,000 Klan members paraded our square and ended their pride stroll on, a court, on our courthouse lawn glorifying a neo-Confederate monument we continue to house to this day. For 109 years, the majority of you have continued to be unbothered by the experience of my ancestors and injustice that continues to loom. As court commissioners, you have not once spoken out to quiet the civil unrest taking place in your county. Perhaps you have not noticed that Gainesville is comprised of more diversity than any other Cook County town, and we are ready to be represented. What is, our courthouse prop what is, what is on our courthouse property should reflect our values and our principles as a community. We refer to ourselves as patriotic while continuing to uphold those who sought to destroy our country. We referred to progressive organizers as divisive when our mission has always been to require inclusion in our community. This monument will be what divides this county. Your decision today is contingent on your morals, your goals of growth in this strong community, and obviously your individual values. Will you value inclusion, peace, or acceptance, or will you continue to uphold the same ideologies that have brought into brought about hatred and division. Will you keep in mind that both majority rule and minority rights must be safeguarded to sustain justice in a constitutional democracy? Today I ask that you take into account that we do not want to change history, but simply want it relocated to a museum or a cemetery where it can continue its life of honorary hatred, intimidation, and violence. If you choose to leave this monument as is, I hope you're prepared for the standard you're setting and the emboldenment of racists you are inciting on our community and our protesters. Let us heal. Thank you. There's an extra beep somehow. Uh, next, we have Mark Clark. I believe he's on the, the line. Uh, last two digits are 4-3. Mr. Clark, if you can hear us, uh, your, your time to speak is, is up, and you can start when you're ready. Yes, yes, sir, go ahead. No state that the court is made up of entirely white men. That happened by the great design of white men in power for the past few hundred years. They built money and power in government, military, law enforcement, public school, college, and workplaces to get paid. Now is the time to set that status quo to diversity and empathy. Now, diversity is something that has passed through elections, but empathy is what you gentlemen can do to pay. I've listened and I've learned lately the statues of members of the black community running in mind that the Confederacy, above all else, despite the way we say about the Southern Pride of Heritage, stood for the idea that black people who are less than the Confederacy properties in the vice president of the Confederacy, that our new government foundations are laid with the cornerstone red 
are on the grave street that the Negroes did not need to the white men. The monument outside says, no nation rose so white and fair, none fell so pure of crime. You can tell me that white is just another word for pure and the poem is for owner, but I learned about who put those statues up, when and why. KKK members, good allies, white supremacists, put up hundreds of monuments all over the South during Jim Crow to intimidate black communities away from voting or seeking justice in courthouses like this. The KKK worship the Confederacy for fighting for slavery. They had rallies around those monuments. In our town, there's photos of hundreds of hood wearing men outside. You cannot let their descendants, a county of 90% white people, vote on a black rights issue. You men need to do the morally correct thing. Have some empathy. Listen to your black community and vote yourselves to remove that step from the courthouse lawn. Don't let white people have a voice on this matter. Don't let the racists have a voice on this matter. Very simple. It's racist. Take it down. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next speaker is Kevin Ng. Kevin Ng, he may or may not be out in the hall. Somebody come. Here comes somebody. Mr. Ng, the floor is yours. First of all, I want to thank all veterans who have served, is serving and will serve the backbone and uh, of our uh, our freedom and democracy, they should always be respected and memorialized. I was born and raised in Gainesville, Texas. As a young man or a young boy, I'd go to the movies. We'd meet right here at the, the, the square before going to the movies. Not one word was said about that monument. When I got old enough to get my driver's license and go up and down this drag, not one word was said about that monument. Black, white, Hispanic friends all together. I went to school in the, mid, excuse me, the early 90s at many pep rallies right here by that monument. Not one word was ever said. I've been to several Medal of Honor parade right here by the monument. Nothing was ever said. The Civil War was the rich man's war. It was the poor man's fight. Cook County voted against it because they didn't believe in that. Well, during the war, the Union soldiers, they looted our businesses. They stole from our homes. They raped our women, mainly female slaves, black slaves, because the punishment was nonchalant or maybe they wouldn't even punished at all. And they burned cities like Atlanta to the ground. So the, uh, the Union Army, they weren't exactly peaceful invaders. I believe the monument represents the Cook County, Cook County soldiers that had to go fight. They had to do what they had to do to keep their families alive and their property intact. That's my perception. Perception is reality. So what makes Pro Gangsville's perception superior to mine? What makes my opinion inferior to their opinion. That monument's never hurt anybody. And I'll end in saying this. If for some reason that monument does get taken down, you won't see people like me or myself, Bravo, Lima, or Mike, anything. We will not burn anything down. We won't loot any businesses. We won't cause mayhem. What we will do, all the next election cycles, we'll go to the ballot box and we will find accountability just like we're going to do for our mayor. But I have faith in you guys right here. I don't know any of you personally, but I've heard great things about every single one of you, and I have confidence in you and the citizens of Cook County. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Richard Lemire. And I may have mispronounced your name, and I'm sorry if I did. Uh, my name is Richard Lemire. I'm the... Uh, Post Commander of Best FC, Jared C. Monty, American Legion Post 263 here in town. Uh, on December 14th, 1898, McKinley called for reconciliation after the Spanish-American War. That was because so many Confederate veterans fought in that war side by side with Union veterans. Now, reconciliation is restoration of friendly relations it's an action of making one view or belief compatible with another. Under Public Law 810, approved by Congress on February 26, 1929, the War Department was directed to erect headstones and recognize Confederate graves and, and, and U, as U.S. graves. 
Confederate veterans were made U.S. veterans by an act of Congress in 1957. That's the U.S. Public Law 85-425, Section 410, approved May 23, 1958. Section 1510 made them eligible for pensions, burial in national cemeteries, and public funded headstones. The last Confederate soldier died in 1958, and some of their children were receiving pensions in 2012. I think when you remove a monument or a gravestone, you're dishonoring veterans. Myself being a veteran, I, I went to Vietnam. We got spit on when we come back. That's no reason to move my headstone, no reason to move a monument, none of that. A ballot vote will allow the commissioners to see the entire community's choice and what they want to do with it. Should it be modified? Yeah. Should there be another monument signifying where we are today? Yes, I feel so. It should, and, and you know, I'd like uh, to speak to all of you together privately and let you know what my plan is to kind of heal the community. I thank you for your time. Thank you. The next speaker is Ron Niss. I believe they're calling in. Last two digits are 1-1. One, one. Eight one one. Is Ron Niss happen to be in the courthouse? If not, we'll move on to uh, John Angus, he's supposed to be calling in. Last two digits are one zero. Is that a yes? Mr. Yeah. Angus, we're, we're in the process of getting you unmuted. All right, Mr. Angus, can you hear us? Yes, sir. All right, you've got two minutes and 20 seconds, and you can start when you wish. Judge Brinkley, commissioners, thank you very much for the time to be heard today. I'm sure by now we've all heard 10,000 reasons to keep the statute, 10,000 reasons to get rid of it. I don't think the arguments in favor of keeping the statute address the actual merit of the arguments against the statute. One thing is that it's a symbol of enslavement of other human beings. It's not necessarily honoring anything other than the people that did that. It's a symbol which sits next to the current seat of government makes it appear the current government could possibly agree with the principles that led to the Civil War. I heard an earlier gentleman say it was a war about secession. Well, it was a war about economics and secession. It was a war about the economics of slavery, and the secession was so they could keep uh, subjugating these people to their own good for profit. So that's exactly what I see. I see also that it wants to be a referendum. If you do a referendum trying to, to give minority rights the proper hearing, in a county that's 90% white, all you're doing is proving the inequality. Uh, what, what the majority generally does, the majority votes for self-interest. And in that case, I think exactly what you're going to see. The only thing a referendum would do is possibly take the responsibility for making such a judgment away from the commissioners so you can put it on the people. Uh, I just don't think that's proper in this case. I'm also a veteran, like some of the other people who spoke, and like the first gentleman. I, uh, I don't really like that statute. I've been dealing with this, I'm 74. I've been dealing with it for a long time. And that Union Army that invaded, the uh, aggressive Army of the North, what we call it today is the United States Army. And we had a war where people in the United States Army were killed. And I'm not really, as someone who wore the uniform for 20 years, I'm not really happy with keeping that statue where it is and honoring the enslavement of a, top, a major part of our population. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. Next, we have Michelle Angus.
And uh, my name is Michelle Ingus, and I am I am a, a resident of, of Gainesville. Um, I'd like to thank you, Judge Brinkley and commissioners, for allowing me to speak today. Um, I would like to say that um, when asked if removing Confederate statues dishonored the soldiers who died fighting for the Confederacy, Dr. Gordon Reed, who has spent her life studying slavery, who grew up in the South, uh, is a Harvard uh, professor of history and legal history. Um, and her reply was, I would not say there are, I would say there are other places for that, on battlefields and cemeteries. The Confederates lost the war, the rebellion, the victors, the thousands of soldiers, both black and white, in the armed forces of the United States died to protect this country. I think it dishonors them to celebrate the men who killed them and tried to kill off the American nation. The United States was far from perfect, but the values of the Confederacy, open and unrepentant white supremacy, and total disregard for the humanity of black people, to the extent they still exist, have produced tragedy and discord. There is no path to a peaceful and prosperous country without challenging and, re and rejecting that basis that the white man is superior to the black man. Uh, if this was about history and teaching history, we would have monuments all over the place crowding every public space that there was. There would be monuments to slavery. There would be monuments to the Civil Rights Movement. There would be monuments to the Native Americans who lived here before us and were senselessly murdered in mass numbers. It's not about history, at least not all of it. It is about honoring the lost cause, which was a narrative pushed in the South to literally rewrite history. It's not about that. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is uh, Pat Ledbetter. Thank you. Uh, I'm here today because I love my community, as I'm sure all of you do. But I'm also a historian, and I've spent 50 years studying the history of this country. At the risk of sounding like a bragger, I probably know more about history than most people in this room. I have spent, and I haven't just read the textbooks. I've gone to the sources. I've read the diaries and the, and the letters and the newspapers. I spent hours and hours in, in libraries across the country studying this. So I think I understand racism here in my head. But I don't get it here in my heart because I've never lived it. Um, and I learned that lesson pretty painfully the other night at the town hall meeting. Some hurtful language was used there. And afterward, I was trying to comfort some young women who had been hurt by it. I was telling them, the woman didn't mean anything by it. She didn't intend to hurt you. And a black woman intervened. And she said to me, who do you think you are to tell her how to feel? She said it angrily. And I thought, right. I have no right to tell her how to feel. I've never been, I've never been referred to by a word that means mule. So I can't walk in her shoes, as James Hughes said. And I can't tell anybody how to feel about those monuments either. I can give you some history on them. I can tell you that I think the lines in this argument were drawn not by the Civil War, but by a movie. By a, prop, by a film that is right, widely regarded the most significant film ever made, Birth of a Nation. It came out in 1915. It was produced by D.W. Griffith, and it shows the Klan writing under Confederate symbols to save the white South from the vicious blacks. That symbol was adopted by the Klan, used by the Klan. It is used today. You can't go back and tell D.W. Griffith he got the South wrong. And you can't tell Dylan Roof, who walked into a church house and murdered nine people, who celebrated the Confederacy and acted under their banner. You can't tell him they've got it wrong. And if we leave those statues there, we will be voting for white supremacy. Make no mistake about it. I'm not accusing anybody of being a racist, and I don't think that's how you people feel. But that's the image of those statues that is currently run in this country for over 100 years. You can try to fight it. I wish you could change people. 
people's minds. I wish you could make them believe that it's about Southern Valley. Thank you. The next speaker is uh, Ken Arterberry. Gentlemen, I'd like to address this monument that stands on the east side of this courthouse. Before the pro PRO BLM movement came to this county, we were people living in harmony with each other. We were living together peacefully rather than fighting and arguing. The pro group claims the monument represents oppression and slavery. That isn't a correct statement. It's just stone. It cannot tell anyone that it approves of slavery. It was erected 42 years ago after a war that was fought over state rights and individual freedom to govern themselves. Both of these Marxist groups want everyone to submit to the Marxist way of government or else. The pro group <coughs> are, are a conglomeration of middle class thugs who indiscriminately destroy historical artifacts. Then you have the BLM, who are an entity whose true agenda was to steal, destroy property, and demain and kill regardless of race, sex, or age. When the pro group Black Lives shout, Matter shouts that this is uh, Black Lives Matter, this is an understatement. All lives matter, including those aborted and regardless of color. I have researched how many people have died in, uh, at the hands of law enforcement in Cook County over the past 40 years. The totals are black Americans, zero, Mexican Americans, zero, others, zero, while white Americans have one who has lost their life to the law enforcement agencies in Cook County. To date, there have been six law enforcement officers that have given their lives in the performance of their duties. When you talk about slavery, yes, it exists all over this country and world to this day in the form of human trafficking of young women and boys for perverts, sexual pleasures. In many countries today, people young and old are sold into servitude and bondage. I would assume it is happening in this area today. I would ask that if the pro PRO BLM group leave this once peaceful county and go back to where black lives are taking the lives of babies, children, men, and women that are being killed every day and stop those killings. I will admit there are a few bad peace officers in this country, but that doesn't make the large majority of them bad. Thank, Thank you. you. The next speaker is Rod Tyler. My name is Rod Tyler. I'm a lifelong resident of Cook County. And I would like to thank the judge, the commissioners, and everyone concerned here today for allowing us to be here. This is part of the democratic process that we have. It is the way that we have a being. It is due process of the law. And I really believe that the city denied us this process because of they hurriedly did away in, with the monument that they have. I have never been so ashamed of our city leaders. They folded like a house of cards when confronted by outside agitators about the city monument. I really hope that we have learned from their mistake. I hope you will support the majority and not let the minority rule our country. I hope you will take a stand today like the commissioners of Parker County did, and vote to leave the Confederate monument in its proper place. I hope it will put an end to these protesters and outside agitators. Thank you for your time and allowing us all to speak here today. Thank you. The next speaker is uh, Francis Robert Black. Thank you, Commissioners, for making this democratic me meeting possible. I am an 84-year-old Korean War veteran. I am here to defend history. I'm here to remind all of us that existing in Egypt right now 
are the pyramids, which were built by 50,000 Israeli slaves. And we all know the Bible. They escaped with Moses across the desert. And today, the Israeli Air Force is not bombing out those pyramids, although they have a good right to do it. I would also remind you today that the Forbidden City exists in China. Or in the face of the Communist Party that hates everything it represents because those Chinese emperors enslaved the population for centuries. But even the commies understood that it was important for their people forever to remember that history. So, I mean, I am not here to defend slavery. Now, I fought against slavery in the Korean War when the commies try to overrun the South and enslave all those people. But I am here you know, to defend baloney. And I think it's a lot of baloney when for a, a whole host of different reasons, there are people in our country that are trying to rewrite our history. It's crazy. Our history is our history. I have two great grandfathers that fought in the Civil War on the side of the Union. You know, I have every reason, to, and one of them was wounded so terribly that he died of his wounds later on at, at the first VA hospital in, in America. But once again, you know, I want to remind everybody, this is America. We have a history, bloody or not, but it is our history. And to sit here and stand here and have the audacity to change our history in the face of the truth is absolutely ridiculous. God bless the USA. God bless the poor folks who are right now who are swimming the Rio Grande River trying to get here because where they're coming from is not as good as it gets here. So Thank in you, spite sir. of your problems with this country, you, sir. no one is swimming out. Thank you very much, Commissioner. The next speaker we have is uh, Justin Thompson. Good morning, commissioners. In 1861, Cook County overwhelmingly voted against succession. It was one of the few counties in Texas to do so. One year later, a Confederate mob executed 40 plus residents and arrested many more in an attempt to suppress dissent known as the Great Hanging. It is my understanding that Howith is one of the members who joined A.J. We uh, Mayweather to ask the court commissioners to place a Confederate statue on the lawn. It has also been brought to my attention that Howith um, acted and portrayed in those, the Great Hanging Act and executed somebody on the courthouse lawn. These statues were being placed all over the, the South to intimidate the black person during the time of Jim Crow and the rise of the KKK. No nation rose so white and fair, none fell so pure of crime, one side reads. Some say white is referring to pure, but in this context, this is not. Confirmed by the cornerstone speech by the VP of the Confederacy, the foundations of the Confederacy were that the black person was less than the white. These statues were placed there to make sure nobody forgot that. We fast forward to the Civil Rights Movement. As protesters were met with a show of force against, against them by police and spectators, people carried Confederate flags, guns, as they beat and killed those protesters during the Civil Rights Movement. We experienced a similar show of force here at the Cook County Courthouse on July 1st. As J.P. McWilliams stated to us, an elected official called him and asked him to call for a show of force against us. We witnessed people gather on the courthouse steps waving the Confederate flags with gun straps to themselves, yelling racial slurs at us and attempts to intimidate. Luckily, that day no one was hurt. The statue does indeed pose a threat to public safety and will continue to pose one until its removal. Choosing to stand with that intimidation instead of against it is not only unethical, immoral, but unchristlike. Today, I ask you to make the decision to remove the Confederate monument from the courthouse lawn so that we as a community can start to heal and effectively have the discussion so we can move forward, not backwards. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Vince Rippey. Judge Brinkley, uh, commissioners, I'd first like to thank you genuinely for showing leadership on what has 
not in the past been a controversial subject, but has been made a controversial subject. Uh, in our processes, in our democratic processes, which we're doing right now, uh, your charge is to represent your constituents. You've had plenty of time to hear from them via email, in person, from this podium. Uh, in, a, um, in another outlet you may or may not be aware of, there are several web websites, one of which is Cook, uh, Conservative Voices for Cook County. That particular website uh, gained 600 members its first 24 hours. The next day, 800 members. It enjoys today 1,100 plus members in this uh, website. And this website would uh, advocate for the continuance and maintenance of the statue where it is. I'm sure I'll speak uh, for many people that hold that position that we ask you to either put this issue on the ballot, which is a proper thing to do, or take an up or down vote similar to the uh, commissioners in Parker County. And that would also be a proper way to do. Gentlemen, we ask for your leadership today and we appreciate your efforts very much. Thank you. The next speaker is Kathy Stroud. Thank you for having us today, giving us the time to speak. I am a retired teacher who has been blessed to work with young people for years. I have a, great, I have a heart for young people, and um, at this time, especially in history. However, I am not in favor of remo removing the statue on the courthouse square. It is, it is a, a remembrance of American history, and we learn from remembering how can we know who we are and where we are headed if we don't know where we came from. And that came from Abigail Adams, um, this, the uh, wife of our second president. We have to know about the past to figure out the future. I truly don't understand the reasoning behind removing the historical American statues, but have to disagree and with the BLM agenda if that is what is behind it. I believe all Americans are truly blessed to live in this country. The fact we can peacefully protest and speak is because of our freedoms. Our country is founded on life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, love of God, family, neighbors, country. We have freedoms other countries, other people in other countries can only dream about. Uh, I, I don't want to lose our freedoms. Thank you, Judge Brinkley, for considering to put this issue up for a vote. vote. May God to con continue to bless our country and bless our freedoms. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next speaker is Matthew McGee. I believe he's on the telephone. Last two numbers are 08. Sir, can you hear us? Yes, I am on the phone. Okay, <laughs> your, uh, your time is starting now. Go ahead, sir. Okay, my name is Matthew McGee. I live here in Gainesville near the end of the homegrown Hero Walking Trail. Uh, I'd like to say I'm not a part of a group. I'm just a concerned individual. Uh, the statue on the courthouse square is racist in what it says on it and, and in the history of why it was put up. It has to go. Uh, I would like to remind people of the proposed vote. Uh, the, voting, the commissioners voting on taking state is non-binding. It's still up to the commissioners 100% regardless of the result. Uh, and, and, and so it's really just a poll of how racist is Cook County. Uh, that answer is just going to hurt more people, people's hearts, regardless of what the percent is. Uh, also note, we're the only county doing such a poll, so th this is going to be national news, and it's going to be embarrassing to this, to this county. Uh, I'd urge the commissioners to accept the responsibility in their office 
and to commit to moving that statute today and so that, so that, so that you commissioners individually as a group and this county I love can be remembered on the right side of history. Uh, two other things in response to people that talk. I'm a part of the Voice of Cook County, Conservative Voice of Cook County Facebook group to see what y'all are up to and I don't support it so we can't count all those numbers. Uh, secondly, the wife of John Adams who is a fervent abolitionist uh, would be rolling over in her grave to be quoted in support of a white supremacist statute. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next speaker is Kyle McCain. Is Kyle here? Uh, maybe on the line, last two numbers are 68. Yes, somebody can. Uh, coming in the door now. Mr. McCain, the podium is yours. I am Kyle McCain. I was born and raised here in Gainesville. I'm still a taxpayer in Gainesville and Cook County. My parents, my grandparents, my great grandparents are buried here, and there's a place next to me beside them. When you were born, you were not born an adult. You grew up, and you matured to the adult that you are now. Along the way, I'm sure there were some photographs taken of you as a child, probably even doing something stupid. When America was born, it was also not born as an adult. 240 years later, America is trying to be an adult. The Confederate monument on the courthouse lawn represents a photo of America as it stood at that time. As the photo of you shows where you came from, what you were doing as you grew up, how you grew beyond your youth, and how far you've come since, since then, the monument outside shows where America was at that stage of its growth, maybe commemorating a mistake that may have been made, and it shows how far America has grown since then. To remove the monument would be the same as throwing away that photo of your youth. There'd be no longer, you'd no longer be able to show what life was like at that time, show how far you've come since then, what the evidence of life was like at that time. The evidence of growth is gone. The reason to ask questions about why there is a monument there is gone. Look at the history books now and compare them to 60 to 100 years ago. And you'll see that the history books have changed. Less and less of the story is being told each time there's a new version of the book. I respectfully request that the Confederate monument be left on the courthouse lawn. Questions can be asked. Answers or versions of answers can be given. Those of us whose ancestors are represented by that monument can remember that they stood up to fight for their families, their friends, and their farms. And I say that because when the states began to secede, there was no Confederate army. In early April, President Lincoln placed an ad in the newspapers in the 10 largest cities in the, in the North, calling for 70,000 volunteers to put down the insurrection. Within two weeks. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. The next speaker is Darlene Denton. She may be outside. She may be on the phone. Last two numbers are four zero. Miss Denton, can you hear us? Yes. Miss Denton? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, ma'am. Your, your speaking time is, uh, has arrived. You have two minutes and 20 seconds. So the floor is yours. Thank you. County Commissioners and Judge Brinkley, the divisiveness regarding the Confederate monuments is an effort to overwhelm our political system, making it more susceptible to changing our form of government from a constitutional republic to a socialist government. As we see nightly on TV, violence is behind the uh, protest. We can be sure another issue will take its place once this one is settled. Capitulating by removing the monument will only make it easier to capitulate over the next controversy. The Southern culture is unique and different from the rest of the United States. Our monuments stand for endurance and resilience. 
a triumph over punitive economic measures by the federal government, shared by both the white and the blacks alike, uh, resulting in extreme poverty, derision of the Union, recovering our homeland after a devastating war, political subjugation, and military occupation. The monuments built in the early 1900s were part of the healing and the reunification between North and South following the 1898 Spanish-American War. In an age of diversity of culture, certainly the South has earned its place. I support leaving the monument where it is or adding the uh, uh, issue to the coming November 3rd ballot for a public referendum. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is uh, Rachel Moore, I believe. Thank you for a voice. My heritage is from both the North and the South. I have grandparents from Illinois, South Carolina, Alabama, with lineage that's surprisingly diverse. But what I want to talk about is our heritage, yours and mine. Some time ago, we visited Virginia. We went to Manassas, Fredericksburg, and Richmond. We went to the Civil War battlefields, museums, and gift shops. A few buildings still stand that have bullet holes in them, and I remember reading one woman's account regarding her home used as a field hospital. The wounded were lying around. One soldier was on our dinner table, and they were wrapping the end of his mangled leg. The foot lay on the floor in our dinner plate. <laughs> I bought a souvenir, a bullet. I was surprised it was so cheap, and I asked the clerk. She said, oh, yeah, people bring those in all the time. You can find them anywhere around here, digging in your garden or walking in the field. And I remembered it said the air was hazy over the battlefield because there were so many bullets in the air. Those battlefields I walked across were covered in blood, the lifeblood of the Americans, taken by Americans, brother against brother, father against son, conscripts against enlisted men and against volunteers, Texans, Virginians, Illinois, all over our great nation all over America, men from different heritages and lineages. One thing, though, was common to all, loss, loss of life, loss of limb, loss of, loss of innocence. They saw things and did things that could not be undone, and at what cost. Many families never got to bury their loved ones. Some bodies were even left bloated, and their bones left to bleach in the sun where they fell. Memorials are erected by those who want to, who want to never forget what they have lost. Memorials remind us of the great cost of unresolved strife and division. There are times when fighting is what's left, but we should always weigh the cost carefully and know that our history is, um, and know our history so we can make knowledgeable choices. Our nation is struggling with diversiveness. In the words of many veterans of the Civil War, both Union and Confederate, the war was over when the last rifle was shot. What a great example for us today that the Confederate Union veterans would gather together at Gettysburg for reunions, where they would camp together, eat together, and swap stories. Now more than ever, we need to remember our heritage, our history, and our past. As you pass by the statue, teach your children what it represents. Please allow the taxpayers a voice. Thank you, ma'am. And then the next speaker is Victoria Sicking. Thank you all for giving us this opportunity to be able to come in and voice our opinions on this monument. When I look at this monument out here, I see a piece of stone. I don't see racism and I don't see hatred because that lies in the hearts of bad people, not in this monument. This monument stands for the Confederate veterans, the Confederate soldiers who gave their lives, who gave everything in a war they didn't want. They fought, they died. They gave everything they had for their families, for their homes. I would like to see this monument stay there until the end of time. Because I would like that monument to continue to remind future generations, generations to come, our kids, our grandkids, their kids, their grandkids, where we came from, what we fought to overcome, what past military, what current military, what veterans, anyone that has given their lives casualties of war were willing to give up for their homes, for the people that they love. This monument was erected in honor 
of those men who sacrificed everything that they had to defend, to protect their homes, their wives, their children, their parents. Thank you. Thank you. And that concludes the people that have signed up for public comments. The next item on the agenda is to deliberate and consider possible action regarding the Confederate monument located on the courthouse square. Uh, I'll start by saying I know this has obviously been a very emotional issue for many in our community. Uh, having been county judge for approximately six years, uh, this issue has generated probably more phone calls and emails. There's no probably about it. This generated more phone calls and emails than any other issue uh, that has come across my desk by far. Uh, and it's very unfortunate that it's dividing our community. Uh, Cook County is a great place to live and work uh, and raise a family. And, and we have many great people. But this issue is bringing out the worst in people in, in a lot of ways. And while we can have differences of opinion, we should be able to do so without being disrespectful for each other. And I want to thank everybody for being respectful today during this meeting. Uh, this monument should not be the rock by which this community is broken. Uh, you know, we collectively share a responsibility in making this county a great place, and we collectively share a responsibility or are part of the blame when it is not. So we're all, we're all at fault for, for this dividing the community. All, all sides are at fault. Uh, regardless of any outcome we have today, uh, I want to ask everybody to take a moment to, to try to see the issue pause and see the issue from the other side, both sides, from the other viewpoint. Because the great thing about this nation is we're able to have other viewpoints and come together and discuss those. And maybe we have some reconciliation, maybe we don't, but we, ha we have that ability to come together and discuss it and do so hopefully in a respectful way to all. Uh, you know, whether it's in our homes, in our communities, or in this nation, we should always be looking at ways to form a more perfect union. You know, many people will disagree with whatever decision we come up with today. Uh, and while I've person personally struggled over the past eight or ten weeks to determine the best path forward, I keep coming back to a, a, the best solution I can come up with, although an imperfect solution. Uh, is to place it on the November ballot for a non-binding referendum. Um, I've spoke with a number of people that, that on both sides that understand that may be the, a, a good solution, a good path forward. Uh, it allows every voter to have a, a voice. We have the ability to do that. Uh, and so that is my, my starting point in the discussion as, as, a, as a body uh, is to utilize that me mechanism that the, the state has allowed us to have. So I'll, I'll open it up for, for more discussion. So the non-binding referendum, I hope everybody understands what that means. So the county will campaign for 11 weeks, and then you'll vote, and then it comes back to us, and then we decide anyway, because the only body that can affect property in Cook County is the commissioner's court in any county in the state of Texas. That's the law. We get elected and we swear our oath to uphold the laws of the state of Texas, and that means taking care of the property. On whichever side of this issue you fall upon, that is our job. I think using a non-binding referendum in an issue like this is, uh, is a, poor, a poor way to find out what we need to do, because I think we all know what we need to do. I think we've all been hearing from all of you. Uh, I've had people tell me, oh, you know it'll go 80-20. You'll know it'll, it'll go 70-30. Well, if we all know this, why do I want to keep a campaign going for 11 more weeks? Um, we need to do our job. And I trust in these five people, the other four of myself. I think we're going to do what's right. I think we're going to do what we all think is right. You all may not agree with it. There may be a bunch of angry people. But the voice you have is in the five people that sit up here. Uh, issues like this, uh, I believe the judge had mentioned in the paper that this is a cultural issue. The referendum vote is not for cultural issues. It's for property issues. Um, 
I don't want to go down that road. I don't want to go down the road of everything being an opinion poll. We raise taxes, it'll be an opinion poll. Uh, so I, I'm against that. Um, that's all I've got. If I may, Judge, go for it. Some may think the court hasn't given us adequate consideration. Members of the court has received significant input from individuals on both sides since June. I want to thank each person that expressed their opinion, either orally or in writing. I've, I've remained quiet in the media, but I will offer a few questions and comments in reference to everyone's input. Personally, I think we live in the greatest country in the world. I believe we share one of the greatest communities in the state of Texas, but I know that no one benefits from hatred. I support peaceful protest, but sadly, some, some have been overshadowed by outside influence. I question some of the motives of the National Black Lives Matter organization. Is BLM exclusive by definition? It seems to me to suggest no other lives matter. Is it the goal of the BLM movement to divide this community and ultimately a nation? Has the BLM movement produced any positive results in our community, Chicago, or anywhere? Have people of color seen any personal benefit? Do we have a racist community? Is there any evidence of systemic, uh, systemic racial injustice by law enforcement in our community? At the national level, I recognize bad cops exist. We have a few bad teachers and even clergy. Sometimes people make bad decisions. People of all colors, but we shouldn't indict an entire race because of a few. Why should we indict an entire profession? The bad ones in each group represent a small part of that race in our society. Let's not forget the majority of people are good. Let's always strive to foster relationships between all races. We collectively interact daily with our neighbors of all colors. We see each other at work, Walmart, Tom Thumb in, in, in school sporting events. Do we have some people trying to foster a hatred that doesn't exist in this community? In the third or fourth grade, I attended school that desegregated. From that point on, I've attended school, worked with, attended church services with people of all colors and all cultures. While in law enforcement, I worked with officers of color and interacted with individuals throughout this community. Occasionally, I arrested a person of color. I developed many relationships. I have some degree of confidence that the people I interacted with would not suggest I'm a racist. Racism from any color in the practice of white supremacy is unacceptable. The monument, the school names, the street names, the town names were all present when we were chosen as the most patriotic town in America and defined as the Medal of Honor City. People of all colors have contributed to make this a great community. It's my understanding that after the war between the states, with both sides fighting as Americans, monuments were erected to represent and honor all soldiers, both Union and Confederate, in an attempt to help reunite the country. Historically, we have recognized veterans of war. Personally, I support our heroes in the military and in law enforcement. I choose to kneel for the cross and stand for the flag. Having said that, Based on the input of the people that allowed me to serve, I would like to make the motion that the monument remain standing as a reminder of dark time in this nation's history so that we all work together to prevent history from repeating itself. Thank you. We have a motion by Commissioner Hollowell for the monument to stay as is. Second. We have a second by Commissioner Leon Clement. I'd like, let's have a little more discussion because there's a couple other things. And some folks may think this is I don't know if corny is the right word. We, we've all read so much stuff in the last few months. Uh, to re reiterate what Commissioner Hollowell said, I know there are folks that think we're not listening. I'm not going to do the county's business via email with anybody. Uh, I, I can't. I mean, I'll, I'll visit with you, but I'm not going to type emails back and forth and answer every email. I, I read every email. I, I, I read everything. I listen to everyone. But I thought this was kind of interesting. Every statue and street building has been renamed. Every date has been altered, and the process is continuing day by day, and minute by minute. History has stopped. 
Nothing exists except an endless present in which the party is always right. And y'all all know where that come from, or most of you I'm probably sure do, George Orwell's book. And it's almost like it's starting to happen. Nothing is good enough anymore. Sure, there's inequity. Sure, some people don't like other people. That rock, that statue, if it causes you to hate somebody, that's on you. It's a historical statue on historical grounds. That rock is registered in the state registry as a historical item on this block. Everything on this block is considered historical. Now, you may not like it, but it is. And I would hope people could use statues like that Items like that, whether a union, confederate, whatever they are, to teach each other what happened. I am a firm believer, if we get rid of everything that everyone doesn't like, we will become George Orwell's book. Historical artifacts are not there to make you feel good about things. Some people, maybe it does. Some people, maybe it makes them angry. That's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. That causes discussions. It causes people to talk. But everybody needs to get a grip. We don't need to be out there getting in each other's face. Let's work together. I could beat this horse for a while longer. But yes, that's what everybody needs to do. Use it as a focal point. Maybe another statue should be put up. I don't know. No one's ever approached us with anything like that. But I know it's wrong to take that one down. My family came here long after that war was over. But it's my history. And that is how I look at it. I look at it as history. John, you got anything? I'm still over here. Close. Uh, you know, we're, we're discussing the Confederate monument. And it's all evolving around slavery. Um, the one thing that wasn't ever mentioned any time when we discussed slavery, uh, before the, the war, the North had slaves as well. Uh, I toured George Washington's plantation and they talked about slaves that were there. So, you know, this whole country, the whole world, there has been slaves. And it wasn't good. It's, it's not a good thing. I, but it's like Commissioner Clement said, his family, my family, it's our family came from Germany. We weren't part of this. But this is still part of the history. And I'm afraid, what's, what's going to be next if we take this monument down? Are you going to be taking presidents off the dollar bill? Are we going to remove Mount Rushmore? So that's all I have to say. Commissioner Snow, do you have anything? <laughs> so people who know me know that I'm a very compassionate person. And I was elected to represent my constituents to the best of my ability and I tell you I'm sitting here you know for the first time sitting on commissioner's court nervous and you know emotional about this probably more than most the way I've been describing it to everybody is we got the far right screaming at the far left with everybody else stuck in the middle and that's the way I'm looking at it it's like it's been absolutely insane to be in our shoes for the last, I'm going to say it's 10 weeks now. And um, I've had countless emails, watched countless Facebook drama. And I, I feel like, excuse me for 
not being organized with this. I didn't write a speech. I was going to be short and sweet, but I've been writing points that I wanted to mention throughout this, so you are going to have to bear with me. Um, you know, it's real obvious what most of my constituents want to happen. You know, it's, it's obvious that people wanted to stay or to go out for a vote. And, you know, I play the what ifs on all sides of it. And, you know, I come up with the fact that if it does go out for the non-binding referendum, you know, there is a negative that it might poll this way or poll that way. But I feel like it does give the smaller audience of this a chance to change more hearts and minds, whether people believe in that or not. Uh, I've watched hearts and minds be changed lately. I've seen, I've had lots of people come to me that were on one side of this, they switch to the middle and then they go to another side. I've watched it with good conversation. I've seen, you know, the right and the left come together in the middle and that's what makes me feel like a the referendum would be a good deal. But I do wonder about the what ifs of the next 11 weeks of campaigning and, you know, energy being devoted into that. I've attended, you know, the two community uh, sponsored meetings uh, called Take a Seat at the Table, you know, where a lot of people want to get together and discuss the hard things, Just talk about the hard topics that nobody wants to talk about. You know, and I think that more eyes and more hearts were opened up in those two hour meetings than all of this protesting and stuff has done. Everybody knows I've been here my whole life. I've watched all of this just tear our community apart and it makes me sick to my stomach. Um, you know, it's, try to hit a few other of my points here. You know, the, the, with the majority of the people who do contact me, you know, saying they want the statue to stay or the statue or to go out for a vote, the other common tie is that, you know, they could see it being moved in the future, but not under these circumstances, this pressure and these tactics. And, you know, and that seems to be the common denominator that I'm hearing is, is that, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the, the way it's being handled, it's the constant pressure on everybody and, you know, I don't know where I'm even going with this, but I'm just getting some of my thoughts out in the public. You know, I've been quiet too. I have been on Facebook and encouraged more people to reach out to me. And, you know, so I've, I've been out there extending my arms to people to talk to me. And it's, uh, you know, so I probably have a little more of bouncing around on this. So I know we have a, a motion in a second, but I don't know. I don't know what else I want to say with that. You good? Uh, no, but I'll be good. Any other comments? Uh, I do want to say that I, I still think the, the non-binding referendum is, is the best way to go. I, I, I appreciate and hear uh, Commissioner Leon Clement's uh, comments, but I still think we've heard from hundreds of people, uh, but we have thousands that, that turn out the vote. Uh, and this is a cultural issue. Uh, and I think we've got an obligation on those larger cultural issues to, to to be able to be as responsive as possible to the people. Uh, and I'll leave it at that. Other comments? If not, we have a motion in a second to leave the monument where it stays. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye opposed. Motion passes four to one. Uh, just want to end on a note, uh, even though I was the one that wanted to take it to a referendum. But that, that monument was placed by uh, A.J. Merriweather, uh, was a, a big financier of it. But the second biggest financier was Admiral Winfield, Winfield Scott Schley. Now, Schley was a Union veteran. So you have a Confederate veteran and a Union veteran coming together to fund that monument. That's what I want to end on. That's two people on opposite sides of a, a, the most divisive issue in this history coming together after the war for a single cause. Now, we can all debate what that cause was, but that's, that's what we should be focusing on. Uh, and with that, I'll move on to the last item, which is to adjourn.
I'll make that motion. We have a motion by Commissioner Snow. Second. Second by Commissioner Leon Clement. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you. Thank you.